A little baseball on a Wednesday night. Opening week continues at Miller Park, and the roof is all closed up. Got some cool temperatures, but it's beautiful inside Miller Park. Crowd filing in to see the Colorado Rockies and the Milwaukee Brewers. Game three of the series, and the young phenom shortstop Orlando Arcia. He's had a good run against the Colorado Rockies and hoping to continue that here tonight. And hi, everybody. We welcome you inside Miller Park. Great to have you with us. Brian Anderson along with Bill Schroeder. Our reporter tonight is Sophia Minute. We'll hear from her in just a moment. Well, the Brewers are 0 2. Two bad games to get it started. They're trying to get back to winning ways, and they're going to give the ball tonight to Willie Peralta, who has a lot riding on this season for his career. What Willie Peralta will we see this season is and the question. Again, I think the Brewers want to see him be the guy he was three years ago when he won 17 games, and he certainly has this stuff to do it. He just needs to calm down and pitch his game. He had a really good spring training after he got called up in the second half last year. He was outstanding. Fastball down in the zone, getting a lot of ground ball out to strike out with the slider. That's the guy that the Brewers need. They need him to be that guy this year, particularly now that Junior Guerra is on the disabled list. All right, Rock, how about a few keys for his success this season? Well, Willie Carlton, when he came up after going down to the minor leagues, he had good tempo. He seemed to be working very quickly, even with men on base. In the past, when he had men on base, he slowed down a little bit unsure of himself. That slider is a key to his success. I mean, he's got to be able to throw it for a strike early in the count and throw it off the plate to get the swing and a miss with two strikes. He did that at the end of the season last year and stay aggressive with a fastball. When he stays on top of that two seamer, he gets a lot of ground ball outs. Nothing wrong with the ground ball out. Doesn't need to strike everybody out. Well, his confidence is high. Had a good run in the WBC, pitching for the Dominican Republic made a fantastic start. Double trouble indeed. How about Travis Shaw off to an historic start in Brewers franchise history. Sophia with more on that.
Looking to pick up their first win of the season, but what an impression Shaw has already made on Milwaukee and Brewers fans in these first two games. His four doubles, a franchise record for the first two games of the season. Good evening, everyone. I'm Sophia Minard, and any time that you can beat Paul Molitor, that's a pretty good way to make a debut in a Brewers uniform. As we told you, Travis Shaw now four doubles on the season. Paul Molitor did that in 1987 with three over the first two games. So for Shaw, he's looking to make a great impression in Milwaukee after being acquired from the Red Sox in the Tyler Thornburg trade in December. He's coming off of his first full season where he hit 242 with 16 home runs. And at spring training, Shaw spoke about what he hopes to bring to the table here in Milwaukee. I'm a very calm individual, first off. Uh, my demeanor usually doesn't change very much, good or, good or bad. Um, I like to think of myself as a middle-of-the-order type of hitter, um, and that's what I'm hoping to bring over here, an everyday option. I don't. Last year I kind of platooned and played only against right-handed pitching uh, the last half of the season once we traded for Aaron Hill. Um, but I'm, I'm looking to solidify myself as an everyday option um, at third base. Willie Peralta getting ready for his 2017 season debut. First pitch coming up next with Brian Anderson and Bill Schroeder. Play Arnado to second out there, throw to first in time. My goodness, man, that is the best third baseman in the game, right there, folks. And he lines one. Look at Arenado again to his feet, and twice in as many days he takes a hit away from Ryan Braun. And Braun sends one to left, way back. Goodbye. Bernie hits the slide, and the Brewers. Get a home run from Ryan Braun, his first of the year. It's been great watching two of the greats in the game, Ryan Braun and Nolan Arenado. And the Brewers hit the field behind their star. 40 degrees outside and raining. Yikes. Roof is closed. And it's perfect inside Miller Park. We're ready for baseball tonight. Let's give you the starting lineup quickly for the Colorado Rockies, turned in by Bud Black. It's brought to you by Potawatomi. Blackman, LeMayhew, Gonzalez, then it's Arenado, Story, and Para with Mark Reynolds, Tony Walters, and Tyler Chatwood rounding it out. And that's the batting order rock that will face Willie Peralta. And as Sophia mentioned, making his season debut, wasn't sure he was even going to be in the Brewers' rotation, but here he is pitching day three. Yeah, picking up right where he left off at the end of the season last year. Last 10 starts at 292 earned run average. 
You see his numbers overall after a good spring. Here he is in the third game of the year for Milwaukee. And how about his first pitch of the night at 98 miles an hour and strike one to get us started. Peralta it has been a wild ride for him. Opening day starter last year. Pitched so poorly ended up going to the minor leagues for a couple of months. Was not expected to return to the major leagues but there were injuries junior Guerra was injured and Peralta was the pitcher that happened to be ready to pitch on that particular day and he made the most of it pitch well the rest of the season and then Peralta ends up taking it through the offseason that was his roller coaster ride a season ago and I think that WBC start rock pitching for the Dominican Republic just a few weeks ago really gave him a shot of energy and certainly confidence going into this 2017 season. Yeah real important for him for on many fronts to have a good spring and certainly that WBC appearance springboarded a, a very good spring for him after a good start uh, finish to his season last year. The Brewers need Willie Peralta to be that guy again that he was a few years ago. Peralta in a 2 2 count Charlie Blackman rolls one foul. Well you go back a couple of years and the Brewers are sitting here in what is the beginning of a rebuild thinking we have a chance to find an ace in Willie Peralta or Jimmy Nelson and both took a little bit of a step back and Willie took a significant step back until he rallied at the end of the year. So these are important times for this franchise when you're trying to find a true number one a guy who has the overpowering stuff don't know if Peralta and Nelson can emerge as those kind of pitchers at this point but they have the best chance to with the kind of stuff that they bring to the ballpark every night I just don't know if they put too much pressure on themselves maybe Willie put pressure on himself after that big season but certainly came back from the minor leagues a completely different guy actually worked a lot quicker on the mound after he got back from the minor leagues maybe that had something to do with his success full count to Blackman and he spoils it foul Charlie Blackman with two hits so far in the series in the first two games the Rockies have won the first two games yesterday was a six five victory seven to five in the opener Monday and first year manager Bud Black has put together a pretty good ball club this season that ball's ripped into right field back and to make the play Perez getting his first start of the season and now let's give you the rest of the Brewers defensively courtesy of Menard well, you got a few changes in there you got Kirk Neuenheis getting his first start he's out in center field and on Perez playing deep and right it was a good thing making that catch on Blackman and you've got Manny Pena he played in yesterday's ball game, but uh, he's getting his first start of the season here tonight. Hernan Perez, a shortstop by trade, now a super utility man in the outfield with Neuenheis. There's a strike to DJ LeMahieu, batting champion in the National League from a year ago. LeMahieu has one hit to start the year, did score a run yesterday. And a big swing and a miss. And that's that slider you're talking about, Rock. That is the difference maker for Willie Peralta. Yeah, two of them. I mean, one's for a strike. It doesn't have to be a great pitch early in the count. The other one is the two strike slider. Like that right there. You want it down in the zone and but close enough to get a swing. He was able to do that late in the season. One ball two strikes Peralta deals a fastball inside. Talk to us about the battery tonight rock got new catching core for the Brewers and Manny Pena gets his first start. No and he uh, he caught uh, Willie a number of times down in Arizona. Manny Pena does a pretty good job behind home plate. Shattered bat slow roller out to Arcia smooth as always two outs in the inning. You know, Brew is very happy with their catching core as far as defense goes. There's really not a whole lot you can do in replacing a Lucroy offensively, but defensively, both Bandy and Manny Pena very solid behind home plate. 
it'll be interesting to see how the catchers evolve with the rotation the Brewers have already made one change in their rotation with Junior Guerra the opening day starter going on the disabled list with a calf strain a grade three calf strain which is the most significant strain you can have before it turns into a tear and Jet Bandy caught the first two games Pena's in there tonight Craig Council said don't try to figure out what the catching rotation is going to be because I'm not sure myself until we get <laughs> to post game and we start developing the next day's game plan right and I think one of the things is going to be the consideration is who's swinging the bat the, the best Bandy yeah, got off to a decent start his first two games there's a strike Carlos Gonzalez in a hole quickly 0 and 2 and good movement good velocity so far for Willie Colorado features one of the best hitting lineups in all of baseball and Gonzalez right in the middle of that an all star a season ago healthy year last year Gonzalez with just one hit in this series it's a guy you'd like to keep quiet remember this is a four gamer going to wrap up the series tomorrow afternoon and then the Cubs are coming to town Friday Saturday and Sunday. Think about the lineups the Brewers are going to be facing their pitching staff will be significantly tested in the early part of the schedule. You got the Rockies the Cubs who many think are the best two lineups in the National League Brewers are going to go to Toronto to start their first road trip of the season <laughs> perhaps one of the best lineups in the American League. In Cincinnati then back to Chicago. Yeah. Well, Peralta is throwing hard early in this game. He's hit 98 a couple of times already. Uh, throwing hard, but more importantly, I think has decent movement and he's throwing strikes. Two and two the count. Two men are out. We're just underway from Miller Park. And Gonzalez foul territory in the seats. Count will stay at two and two. Peralta now 27 years of age. Great spring. Made two starts three appearances in the Cactus League he gave up just one earned run in 12 and two thirds innings and then he went to join the Dominican Republic team for the World Baseball Classic and made one start there he pitched well. Two two. And that one's on the edge a called strike three Andy Fletcher the home plate umpire said so hitting over three up three down with a K and now the Brewers are coming to bat. Potawatomi Hotel and Casino let the games begin. 
Potawatomi batting order for the Brew Crew tonight. Craig Council has VR, then Thames, and then Braun at the top. In the middle goes Shaw, Perez, and Neuenheis with Pena, Arcia, and Peralta rounding it out. And there is Tyler Chatwood, day three starter for Bud Black in the Colorado Rockies. Yeah, 27 years old, not a big guy. 5'11, 200 pounds. Sixth season with the Colorado Rockies. Really good season last year, 12 and 9. And was really good on the road last year for Colorado. Now Chatwood, with a sub two ERA away from Coors Field, is matchups with the Brewers have gone his way. The Brewers have not beaten him in uh, his career. This Rockies starting pitching staff is interesting. They are young, but they are very talented. We have seen John Gray and Anderson yesterday pitch a good ball game. And now Chatwood pitching is always the story with the Rockies whether they contend or not and they are confident they have the pitching to challenge the National League West this year. And we've seen their bullpen come in and uh, shut down the Brewers two consecutive games. It's just a matter of whether the starting rotation is going to be able to hold it together. they are going to score a lot of runs. Chatwood a big time ground ball pitcher. Not a huge strikeout guy throws a lot of fastballs good moving on the fastball he'll throw sliders from time to time but he's going to throw a majority of his pitch is going to be heaters almost 70 percent say a ground ball pitcher will play well at Coors Field in Denver and they've actually grown the grass up a little bit at Coors Field we understand but you see Chatwood 57.6 percent ground ball percentage last year the best was Stroman of the Blue Jays then you had a couple of Cardinals in there as VR chops one foul. It's another reclamation project for the Rockies. Chatwood had Tommy John surgery in July of 2014. Missed the 15 season and then came back last year with 12 wins and 27 starts for Colorado. And a ground ball that finds a hole. VR is aboard with a base hit. That's a guy the Brewers got to get going. Off to a bit of a slow start. First two games. Let's check out the defense for the Rockies. Solid defense. All started with their third baseman, Nolan Arenado. But uh, this is the same group, same eight that has started the first three games. But uh, they, they are good out there. A number of Gold Glovers. DJ LeMahieu, one of the best over at second base. Now you got Gold Glovers in left and right, second base, third base. Arenado has turned himself into one of the great defensive players in all of baseball and perhaps the best third baseman in the major leagues and we have seen him make some terrific plays already four consecutive gold gloves and he's only 24 years of age. Eric Dames back in the two spot tonight. His second start as a brewer. One of the more intriguing follows of the year right here Eric Dames three years in Korea Brewers signed him to a three year deal based upon his numbers in Korea the fact that he turned himself into a star in the KBO back to back 40 homer seasons had a 40 40 season two years ago with over 40 homers and 40 stolen bases monster numbers in three years in the KBO look at that 124 home runs in those three seasons close play and VR can't get back to the bag and now Reynolds drops the ball throws to the bag and VR is out and just uh, base running mistakes and, and Chatwood with a very quick move over to first base. I think Craig Council wanted to take a look at it. That is a huge lead. He was leaning, couldn't get back. He decided to take off. Reynolds not able to get to him. Drops the baseball, but at this point, still able to get him. Let's see, does the tag come down in time? I don't know. I don't know either. That was a, a great slide, but the Brewers have already declined a challenge here early. Remember, you only get 30 seconds to make a decision now. Does he get yeah, him right I think there? He, did. Yeah, he, he got did. him on the hip. Yep, he got him before he got to second base. 
And so Thames now batting with the bases empty and there's strike one one ball one strike Man, mistakes have really hurt the Brewers in the first two games and they make one early tonight. And it feels like Jonathan VR has been right in the middle of it all and I'm sure he is hoping to get things settled down but defensively and now on the base pads yeah. he feels like he is wrapped up in the axle to start this season. Some of it self inflicted. Well, it's funny how expectations can affect a player. I mean, no expectations really on VR last year, and he he dominated. Those expectations are there. They're expecting him to do what he did last year, if not more. And sometimes uh, you can take that a little bit too far. You've got to put that out of your mind. And a swing at a miss. Chatwood strikes out Thames. Got him with a fastball that hit 94 and now two outs in the first inning. Here comes Braun now. Hit the first homer of the year for the Brewers. Launched one out to left field yesterday. That was after he was robbed of another potential base hit by Arenado. And as he was rounding second base, he looked at Arenado and said, you're not playing out there, are you? Or something like that. <laughs> Can't that was get a that one. Try catching that one, right? <laughs> Irenado playing way back at third base. Yeah, why wouldn't you? Ryan Braun's not going to bunt. Giving him a little bit more opportunity to get more range when you're that deep. They check him out. Rockies are saying, Ryan, you want to bunt? Just go ahead. Mm -hmm. We'll take that. Jam shot and story the shortstop will make the play to end the inning promising start with a VR single but he was picked off and it's a three batter inning for Chatwood. You're confident, little bit, because the way you was doing, uh, you know, just every out and pretty much struggle, struggle. And uh, as, a, as a player, you're going to lose your confidence a little bit. There's no question about it. But I think my bigger thing was mechanical, was uh, a struggle where, where repeat my delivery. And when I went down to the minor league, I was put all that together and being able to repeat it uh, consistently. And uh, that was the difference. Willie Peralta talking about last season and Rocky has been very open about his struggles last year as he gets the count started with Nolan Arenado and I think that's healthy I mean yeah. he's a happy guy generally comes to the ballpark always a big smile on his face and he wasn't himself last year and understandably so he was not pitching the way he expects yeah, you got to be accountable if you're not pitching well you just admit it and uh, people I think respect that a lot more than if you try and you know make excuses and a lot of the confidence sometimes it wasn't really his his doing there'd be defensive plays that weren't made and it would get to him a little bit 
Men would get on base and things start to speed up for Willie and hopefully that's behind him now. He's got to just relax go out there and pitch his game. I know that's a, an old cliche but Willie did it mm -hmm. in his last 10 starts last year. Now he felt like it was going to be a, a final chance probably wouldn't have been but he treated it as such as a breaking ball and a check swing according to first base umpire Alan Porter. And it's three and one on Arenado. One thing Peralta did that everybody raved about is when he did get sent down to Colorado Springs he he didn't pout he didn't sulk he went down there he tried to work through his problems and he was a great teammate and he was involved in celebrations and every time the Colorado Springs Club had a great moment he was right there enjoying it with his teammates and supporting his teammates and that was a good sign. Yeah Rick Sweet the uh, manager down in Triple A had nothing but great things to say about him. Gobbled up by Shaw on a hot shot from Arenado and a nice play Travis Shaw to retire the Rockies third baseman. See the difference in season for Peralta his first 13 which got him sent down to Triple A and then he comes back his last 10 starts of the year and an earned run average of two nine two. Yeah that uh, that walk to the strikeout to walk ratio is the one that I kind of like to highlight. I mean you know a few too many walks not a lot of strikeouts early in the season but then he turned that around quite a bit when he came back up. One away here is Trevor Story. Three walks yesterday for Story. Which was a first for him in his brief career in the big leagues. This is his second season played 97 games last year and hit 27 homers always thought of as a free swinger and his patience has him in an 0 2 count to start this at bat. Story hit 20 homers before the All Star break. And then a thumb injury, torn ligaments. You're always interested to see how a hitter comes back from a hand injury, especially torn ligaments and a thumb. Hands are such a big part of what you do offensively. And he had a full off season, came back spring training, and by all accounts, he looked normal. Yeah, hitting is all about elbows and down. It's, uh, you know, forearms, wrists, and hands. Uh, good pitch. Fastball just missed. 98. What for has got it rolling. Yeah, I tell you what gets into a hitter's head when Willie's able to throw two sliders for strikes to start the at bat. That's what we're talking about. Now, what you want to do with two strikes, you want to throw that pitch a little bit off the plate to see if you can, you know, get a swing and a miss. Back out there and a swing and a miss indeed. Story strikes out. One sets up the other, and Peralta picks up his second K. You, know, you get that first pitch slider over for a strike. It really puts a little bit of doubt into that hitter's head. There's that four seam fastball right on the edge, and that's just a perfect location for a pitch right on that corner. Maybe a little bit off, but look at the velocity 97. So two men are out, five in a row retired by Peralta, and here comes Gerardo Parra. The two former Brewers in this Rockies lineup have done big damage in this series. Mark Reynolds on opening day and Gerardo Parra last night. Parra drove in three with a double that put the Rockies ahead for good last night. Colorado banged out 12 hits, winning 6 5. Parra recorded his first game with three hits or more since the 2016 season way back in May against Cincinnati. He had a down year last year. Found himself in and out of the lineup had an ankle injury. But he has come back. Hot to start the year had a good spring. Getting some playing time the Rockies had some players on the disabled list he's probably going to be. More of a, uh, a swing guy in the outfield when these guys come back. Dave Dahl, as you mentioned. Rockies are without David Dahl. Ian Desmond's on the disabled list. All expected back 
by the end of April or in early May. Ian Desmond's going to play first base for the Rockies. Big free agent acquisition. He goes from center field with the Rangers last year to first base for Colorado. Parra's late, fouls it away. Two and two the count. Ah, she's got a souvenir, maybe a signature on that hat. She's having a great day at Miller Park. Good to see it. Good night to be inside. Mm -hmm. Inside Miller Park or inside watching us on television. <laughs> Either way, it's raw outside. Breaking ball rolled over. Thames has it and can't get the tag on Para. A little yeah. confusion. Yeah, missed him. Yeah. And Willie started over there, then stopped, and then kept going. And Thames elected to take it himself. Craig Council wants to take a moment to get a look at it. It will be scored as a hit for now. Yeah, Willie, I just got to keep going. And Thames might have been able to hit him. And maybe did he get him on the arm? I'm not sure. Maybe not. Craig Council satisfied that it was missed right there. Does he get him? Nope. Good call by Alan Porter over at first base. Sees little plays. The Brewers are not executing, and it has hurt them in this series. It has. It's not just errors that you know hurt you. It's plays that should be made that aren't. So it extends the inning as Peralta gets Para back to the bag, and here is Mark Reynolds. What a start he's off to. Reynolds drove in three on opening day and another one yesterday four hits already he's homered he seems to be really effective right now in off speed he took junior Gary out of the ballpark on a splitter and then took a change up from Zach Davies and hit it hard in the left field. Well, Peralta snaps one in for a strike. He buckled the knees of Reynolds. Yeah, you know, that's the pitch that uh, is going to make or break him, in my mind, that early slider for a strike. 99 miles an hour on a pitch already tonight. That was that strikeout pitch to get Gonzalez at the end of the first. Runner goes. Pena's throw on the bag. The tag in time. And Parra is cut down. So that infield hit wiped out by the new Brewer catcher. These two catchers can throw it well, Bandy and Pena, and right on the mark, a caught stealing to end the second inning. Nice throw.
the Rockies as we head to the bottom of the second and our scoops from the clubhouse brought to you by Car Soup earlier today general manager David Stearns addressed a roster move made by the Brewers this afternoon they picked up Nick Franklin from the waivers in Tampa Bay and they designated reliever Michael Blazek for assignment now Franklin was a first round draft pick with the Mariners in 2009 and Stern said he's a rare find in that he's a switch hitter who can play multiple positions and has had success hitting in both the minor leagues and the major leagues. Now he's expected to join the team on Friday and uh, they will have to make a, an assignment there as well to make room for him. But again, versatility is a word that we hear all the time from Stearns and Council and Franklin certainly fits that bill. He also addressed the strikeouts by the Brewers lineup this first two games, 28 of them overall, and he said, you can live with the strikeouts if there's nobody on, but it's those with a runner on, less than two outs. Those are the ones that they need to clean up. Yeah, no question. Thank you, Sophia. As Travis Shaw at his first at bat bounces out on a 4 3 ground ball. Your assessment on the roster move, partner? Well, again, I mean, you get a guy that's very versatile, again, that's had some major league uh, success. I mean, he was a big time prospect early in his career, just didn't pan out for him. But the surprise to me is, uh, you know, Michael Blazik. I mean, he was a highly talented reliever for the Brewers. He really did a heck of a job. I think injuries caught up to him and now designated for assignments. We'll see what happens with Blazik. But you got to wonder, there's got to be a pitcher that's going to be, uh, you know, sent down. I can't imagine the Brewers want to have just four position players for very long. So Nick Franklin would be the fifth. And the Brewers are probably going to go down to seven relievers. Uh, and I'm sure the Brewers uh, have. A pretty good idea of what they will do but it's not going to happen until Friday so you still have tonight's game tomorrow afternoon's game there's a lot that could happen as Perez back up the middle Chatwood slowed it down and LeMahieu will finish it off and a one four three put out four out number two Yeah, when Chatwood's on the mound the infield better be ready he gets an awful lot of ground ball out there's that Brewers eight man bullpen currently carrying. 13 pitchers. It's been busy already this year. Two games. They've been working quite a bit. I'm sure this will be a night where we see Taylor Youngman and Neftali Feliz, the only two that have not pitched thus far. The Brewers' new closer is Feliz. And you don't want him sitting around too long. It's not just that it's this is game three. You got to remember the Brewers are coming from. Spring training did have a couple of exhibition games, but it's been a while since either have pitched. And you certainly don't want your closer to sit out in that bullpen too long without any action. Two quick outs for Chatwood. Kirk Neuenheis at the plate for the Brew Crew. His first start. Three first starts of the season tonight. Nguyen Heis, Pena, the Brewer catcher, and Hernan Perez. All have played. Everybody's played. I like what Craig Council called it his position player group. He said, don't, don't call them starters and bench players. I've got a 12-man position player group that we pull from. And now everybody <laughs> has a start. That's in that group of 12. We have no bomb squad here. Not in Milwaukee. <laughs> Not yet. Newen Heist late. And that's a strikeout to end the inning. Three up, three down for Chatwood. We go to the third. The Rockies are coming up.
to the third inning and hey this Friday the Brewers open up a weekend series against the defending world champs the Chicago Cubs come to Miller Park for an opening week showdown in the NL Central great seats are still available at Brewers.com saw the Cubs and the Cardinals got rained out they're going to make up that game tomorrow and so the Cubs will arrive from St. Louis as opposed to getting a chance to go to Chicago first and they'll be glad they're not playing in Chicago this weekend actually hopefully the weather's going to turn a little bit Mark Reynolds at the plate he was at the plate when Parra was thrown out trying to steal and he starts this third inning for Colorado. I know about the weather this weekend based on the swelling in Rock's right elbow and it's moderate right now. Yeah. I think it's going to get warmer. It's going to get really bad when <laughs> they start snowing. They're talking about <laughs> snow tomorrow. That's that's no fun. Snow in April. But what do we care? We got a roof. They got a roof. We don't mind that. So all of you out there, all of our broadcasting brothers and sisters who sent us these text messages about the weather in Milwaukee. We don't care. It's beautiful we right got here. A roof. <laughs> two two pitches up high for a ball. Yeah, have a couple of uh, postponements already. You talked about the Cardinals and Cubs. The White Sox have been postponed. Full count. See what Peralta has in mind. And a fastball. Reynolds is late. That's going to end up in the seats. It has been the off speed stuff that Reynolds has been hitting hard in this series, and he was behind that fastball from Willie. Reynolds with four hits and seven at bats in the series two doubles and a homer and there's a breaking ball that Reynolds sends the left Braun on the run that is going to bounce fair and will bounce out and Reynolds gets a breaking ball and he doubles again. Yep, there you go right the off speed stuff. He's been on it the entire series. That wasn't really a bad one if you're talking about a three two slider from Peralta. He was able to throw it for a strike. That's what you want. It was down, but that's the pitch that Reynolds has been getting some pretty good swings on in this series. That all speed pitch just does tuck it inside that left field line. Just fair. And Reynolds leads off this third inning with a double. Tony Walters, the catcher at the plate. Five hits in the series for the former Brewer Mark Reynolds was here in Milwaukee in 2014. Walters 0 for 3 yesterday had a couple of hits on opening day. And a hot ground ball Reynolds goes and he's easy pickings at third base. The rundown is on RC of the tag throw to first. And the throw took Dave's mm. off the bag. That would have been sweet. That bad base running by Mark Reynolds. Put it down as a six to five to six put out, and the Brewers should have had a double play. Throw a little bit off the mark from Marcia. Good heads up play by Orlando. It only takes him a couple of throws to get the out. Now the throw pulls Thames off the bag, or they would have had an easy double play. That's something you see a whole lot of from Marcia. He's usually pretty accurate yeah. with his throws. Very strong throwing arm, usually on the money. That's that's been the theme though of this series so far as the pitcher Chadwood gets a bunt down. Pena's only play is first. And the second out. Sacrifice bunt. Two to four on the put out. And Walters ends up at second base with two outs in the top of the order coming up. Hey, it cost the Brewers dearly in yesterday's ball game. A little pop up, a, a fist shot. 
to uh, VR not able to handle it should have been a double play but it, they didn't get anybody ended up being a big inning for Colorado. Well oh, that's not going to be the case with this play. And you know what's interesting you go through the entire spring and the Brewers. No they are a much improved defensive team they they showed that this spring they played well defensively this spring. Arcia is a fantastic defender at shortstop and while that is not an error on Arcia it has been the the little things the little plays that haven't been made the Brewers have been on the other side of it to start the season. Good news is you hope that will turn and it will equal out at some point. The two things Craig Council and the Brewers talked about going into spring training is that we are going to be a much better defensive team that strikes out a lot less. <laughs> and in the first two games of the series they have been exactly the team that we saw last year but you're hoping that turns around a I little think bit. It's a little bit of nerves early in the season you know guys that have expectations placed on them. We talked about VR. I think you know Keon Broxton's in that group. Guys that now have expectations placed upon them and you handle that stuff differently. Tough hitter at the plate won the Silver Slugger Award last year as the center fielder in the National League, Charlie Blackman. He lined out sharply to right his first at bat to start the ball game. Blackman's been in the big league since 2011 has not won a gold glove but he is a superb defender. All star back in 2014. Last year hit 29 homers from the center field position 82 runs batted in he won the that silver slugger award because of it runner is off the back throw to second oh and Arcia dropped the ball <laughs> again. It was an out. How about that throw from Pena? Boys, you got a good arm or what? Straight as a string all the way down to second base. And if Arcia is able to keep it in the glove, it's an out. Boy, oh boy. Look at the big lead. Look at this throw. Hold on to it and you got an out. Mm, man. Boy. Right in the end of the glove and just not able to hold on to it. At two, Orlando. <laughs> At two. <laughs> I'm telling you this guy Pena has got a heck yeah. of an arm. He has shown it already. Peralta scares Walters back to the bag. Pena has already thrown out a runner. Caught stealing to end the second inning. You saw it all spring with the uh, with Bandy and Pena. I mean it cut down the running game nicely. There's a strike. Three and one now. Hitters count and a very good hitter at the plate and he takes it and Peralta spins one in for a strike. There you go confidence with that breaking pitch. I guess walking Blackman after he fell behind three and oh not the worst thing in the world you got a right hander on deck but you got the NL batting average leader from last year in the on deck circle. Let's see what he does here. Setting up outside, 3 2 pitch, a fastball fouled away. Blackman last year had an OPS of 933. On base percentage of 381. His stolen bases were down. He had 17 steals. The year prior, he stole 43. And in 2014, his All Star year had 28 stolen bases. Very fast runner. Payoff coming, and it is ball four. Didn't miss by much, and able to check his swing. And now Peralta with two on and two out, and LeBayhu coming up. Uh, that's a pretty good take by Blackman. That didn't miss by much. Andy Fletcher could have rung that one up. Just a little bit up, a little bit off the plate. Good eye.
So it'll be LeMahieu. In this relentless Rockies lineup. There are no holes in this batting order outside of the pitcher. LeMahieu takes a breaking ball. That one buckled his knees. First and second inning could have ended. But Arcia couldn't hang on to a throw a back pick behind a base runner. And Peralta trying to fight his way out jam shot right to Arcia. He'll go to the bag the easy way and the inning is over and Peralta. Has put up another zero three in a row Brewers coming up. Coming up, and by the way, it's time to secure your seats for the postseason as the Bucks make their final push for a playoff spot. Get your playoff two pack right now. It's only $55. Guarantee your seat for the first two home games. You can head to foxsportswisconsin.com slash events for details. Has been a fun team to watch. Great second half for the Bucks. Say hello to our buddy Joe Prunty, Bucks assistant coach. Big baseball fan turned into a big Brewers fan. He and his wife Laura. And we wish him well. The Bucks having a good run. Manny Pena will lead off for Milwaukee. Arcia to follow. And then Peralta. Sounded like a broken bat. And Story will make the play for out number one. There's a lot of. Troy Tulowitzki and Trevor Story. Did you see the way he threw that ball? Yeah, he threw it like Arenado throws it. Off one leg. Yeah. And Arenado throws it like that because Tulowitzki threw it like uh -huh. that. So, so even though uh, Troy Tulowitzki is in Toronto now, there is the Tulowitzki influence still. And they very rarely throw one away. It's a, it's a, a way to throw that can be a little bit erratic at times. This is a carbon copy of Troy Tulowitzki throw off one leg. Yeah, a lot of guys will take crow hop and throw right over the top. Certainly not the Alan Trammell way to throw. I'm dating myself, I know. More fundamental, set your feet right over the top, mm -hmm. straight as a string. How did Robin Yount throw it? Same way. Stuff. Set your feet. Not like that, but like <laughs> Alan Trammell. Arcia now. That looked like that kind of a throw is one of those that over the course of a season you do a lot. Puts a lot of pressure on that elbow. Mm -hmm. Two and one and the young shortstop fouls it away. Matter of fact my elbows throbbing just mm -hmm. watching just like it. well that's because the weather's going to turn. Remember I told you. <laughs> you have a much. There's a lot of things that makes your weekend. elbow throb. <laughs> <laughs> 
Great to be back at the ballpark with you, partner. Yeah. We've already had a lot of fun picking on our production crew and they're picking on us. I miss it. You know, it's nice, you know, having a couple of months, you know, through the holidays, but you know, once you get into you know, like mid January, I start missing the ballpark. Then you know, fantasy camp comes and goes and then spring training, but nothing like being back here and doing games that matter. Arcia rips one into the gap in left center. That's going to go to the wall. It takes a big bounce, and now Arcia has got a chance at three on his way. Cut off and relay comes up short, and Arcia is in with a triple. Yep, the Robin Yount wall got Charlie Blackman right there. That angle out there on both sides, both left center, right center. Didn't play it very well, and that's what allowed Arcia to get on his horse into third base. And he's thinking triple right out of the batter's box. I mean, it's an easy double, but Arcia running hard. The angle gets Charlie Blackman, and Arcia into third base without a problem. Career triple number four for Orlando Arcia, second hit of the season, and now he's at third base with one out. And Peralta at the plate, and he is up there hacking. Yeah, that design aspect of Miller Park, we talk about it every now and then, but that was a Robin Yount idea. And it was originally a symmetrical outfield fence, but Robin thought that gappers, if you had an angled wall like that, and you weren't familiar on how it plays, it could lead to triples. And Robin, of course, feeling like the triple is. One of the most exciting plays in baseball and, and as they're looking around the layout of the ballpark where were you going to be able to find a triple mm -hmm. and yeah. that's that's the spot that the kid came up with and we see it all the time just like that and Willie Peralta in the right field that's going to be caught now RC tags here comes a throw and the slide he is going to be hasn't touched the plate yet yeah, now he's it. out Yeah, missed the plate. And it's going to end up as a double play to end the inning. Great catch by Gonzalez. And a former gold glover cuts down RC at the plate. Well, is he blocking off home plate? No, he's not. That was a good play by Walters. Clearly, RC misses home plate. That's a heck of a call by Andy Fletcher. And missed it by about six inches. Walters finally tags him for the final out. A uh, tough break. Peralta hit it sharply. Too sharply to score the run, however. And that's how the inning will end. No challenge issued, and the Brewers come up empty in the third. Up three gold glove awards for the Colorado Rockies. Great arm, and he just cut down Arcia. Leads us to our showstopper around the major leagues, and here's a guy who is 
A regular on the showstopper, Kevin Pillar robs Manny Machado in Baltimore tonight. The great Toronto center fielder. And that looked like that was going out, partner. I think that had a chance to fly. And Pilar has brought a few back yeah. in his time in Toronto. He shows up in the highlights often. Yeah, he's a heck of a center fielder, isn't he? Reckless abandon against those walls out there. We'll see him uh, first road trip. Gonzalez leads off. Peralta back to work. Fourth inning, no score. Gonzalez followed by Arenado, then Trevor Story here in the fourth inning. Rolls over one. Thames has it, and he'll go to the bag himself. Four out, number one. Let's take it back to the throw, Rock. What'd you see here from Gonzalez? I'll tell you what, it starts out with a catch. I mean, he's off balance when he makes his catch just as before it gets to the grass. He's got it right himself, but he's shallow enough to be able to make a pretty good throw, a one hopper. That's a heck of a play by Walters because it was one of those in between hops and he did a real good job did Walters not blocking off home plate before he had the baseball had he done that that would have been a run for Milwaukee Colorado catcher a converted infielder and he used some of those skills on that pick that is not easy to do with a catcher's mitt right. Yeah but Gonzalez having to you know off balance making that catch coming in has a set himself and very quickly get the throw in it was right on the money. Nolan Arenado now with one away. The other lesson on that play at the plate by the way. When an umpire doesn't make a definitive call out or safe. That's the indication that the batter or the runner has not touched the plate yet or touched the base yet. Right. Yeah. So he was waiting. For Arcia to make a move, of course, of course, if Arcia goes right back to the plate, he's going to be tagged out anyway. He was kind of stuck in that situation. But watch the home plate umpire Andy Fletcher. No call, no call, which tells you that he's waiting. And Walters did the right thing to go tag him. Yep. A lot going on in that play. Now. The baseline, the quote unquote baseline, when you're in a play like that, you can get back to home plate right. however you can. So yeah. if you want to put a juke on or do whatever you have to do to try to get to the plate, you can. Yeah, but once you get out of the cut out of the dirt, I think uh, you kind of abandon your opportunity to get back. Marcia did not do that, so he could have tried to get back to home plate, but it would have been futile. Yeah, you can't walk back to the dugout and then. As they throw the ball around, go back and touch the plate. At some point, you're declared out no right. matter what. Yeah. Arcia tripled and then unable to score on that line drive by Peralta. Kind of bad luck for Willie. He hit it right at Carlos Gonzalez. A little bit either way, I think that's a run. Soft fly ball into left center is going to fall for Arnato. He just reached out and dumped one into left center, a base hit. That's his fourth hit already of the season. And making contact, that's what it's all about, right? Good pitch by Peralta, slider off the plate, and look at how much he extends the hands, one handed, and able to dump it into left center for a base hit. Just put the bat on the ball, give yourself a chance. Well, not all of your good pitches result in outs, not all of your bad pitches. Result in hits either. That was a good pitch and a good piece of hitting by Arenado. It's amazing how the good hitters get lucky so often, right? Because they put it in play. <laughs> the nature of their swing and yeah. two strike approach, just trying to lay the bat on the baseball, paid off. He's had a couple of hits like that in the series. Well, now Peralta will try to get a double play ball out of Trevor Story. It looked like a little change up he tried there. Which has always been 
A pitch that Peralta struggled with. He works on it every spring. And he had a very good changeup in the minor leagues. And he usually throws it to lefties, not often to right handers. He'll throw a curveball from time to time. He's already done that tonight. That's a good slider. I could have been a backup slider actually now that we're taking a look. Those are hard to tell. The changeup versus the slider that doesn't spin properly. So you were right, partner. He's not going to break out that changeup against a right handed hitter. That would be more for a guy like Charlie Blackman or Gonzalez. Not to say he won't do it against a right hander, but doesn't very often. Doesn't very often throw a changeup, period. One and two the count. Story at the plate. Runner at first, Arenado. And a swing and a miss. He struck him out. He went with the high heat. And strikeout number three for Peralta. Two outs. Just reared back and let him have the big fastball up in the strike zone. Here it is, hit it. Good luck. Right underneath. Three K's, one of them looking. Got Gonzalez in the first. Second time he has struck out Story. And with two away and a runner at first base, here is Para. Reached on an infield hit in the second inning. Rockies have three hits, the Brewers with two. Two and zero oh on Para. Gerardo had a great spring. He had 3.52 in the Cactus League in 20 games. Had a homer. That last pitch that he threw was a changeup. Yep. Looked like a pretty good pitch, but didn't get the call. He's thrown two pretty good pitches in his at bat. Both could have been strikes. To a nothing on Para. And he came back with an off speed pitch and Para fouls it away. Gives you an idea that Peralta is confident in his breaking stuff right now. He's throwing it when he's down in counts, been able to get him back into counts. Yeah. Able to throw it for strikes when he needs to throw it for a strike and off the plate when he doesn't need to throw it for a strike when he's got two strikes on a hitter. Of course, Arenado ended up getting one for a base hit, but it was a good pitch. Two gone, runner at first. In a scoreless game, Peralta deals. Para rolls one to second base, and Willie Peralta is mowing him down. Three Ks, four scoreless. Top of the order is coming up for the Brew Crew VR, Thames, and Braun.
Rockies Brewers and swipe your very own Jonathan VR bobblehead on Sunday April 23rd as the Brewers take on the Cardinals and all fans receive a stolen base counter bobble courtesy of Toyota celebrating the VR's league leading 62 stolen bases last season. We are still looking for number one to click off on that counter. Very optimistic by the Brewers to put the three digits on the counter. Well, the all-time record, what, 130, what, one or two? 130. Ricky Henderson, 1982. Yeah, so optimistic is right. <laughs> Very optimistic. Tyler Chabwood has had some traffic, but been able to get around it. That was a big double play the Rockies came up with to end the third inning. The line drive to Gonzalez. He threw out Arcia at the plate to end the inning. Arcia had tripled with one out. VR singled to start offensively for the Brewers, but then was picked off. Officially a caught stealing. But a base running blunder by VR. Jonathan played in the WBC for the Dominican Republic. Great experience for him. That'd be backed up Robinson Cano or uh, the Dominican Republic team and they get a whole lot of playing time but it was a great experience for him. Well for a guy who is making the move to second base this season. That's not a bad guy to be around for a couple of weeks as yeah. VR strikes out. First out of the inning. It was a change up that time. Didn't throw many of those. Something off speed had him way out in front. Yeah. Change up. I mean he very rarely ever throws a change up. Got VR on one that time. Chatwood has an interesting motion to the plate as he misses ball one on Thames takes the glove or the ball out of his glove slaps the glove right before he gets into his full motion check this out Jason Mott used to do that yeah. maybe still does Greg Holland does that the yeah, closer right. of the Rockies now yeah all a timing mechanism I guess I always thought it might show a grip but he, he's hiding that from the hitter. Yeah. He, the way he turns toward the hitter there's no way that you could see that because you're basically seeing his numbers. Yeah, watch the glove. The gloves hiding that uh, that grip. And the fact that he throws an awful lot of fastballs anyway. This is a guy just got to sit fastball. Hope that the other stuff isn't a strike. Eric Dames strikeout victim in the first one of the three punch outs for Chad Wood and that ball's high in the air right center is this going to be number one back it goes and long gone Eric Dames with his first home run as a brewer. What a moment for him. No, he's going to like hitting here. That he ball is. way back out there into the Toyota territory. He is fired up. <laughs> that is his first home run in the major league since 2012. September 23rd of 2012, he homered off Ryan Dempster. Then playing for Seattle was Thames. Dempster with the Rangers. And after all of those home runs in Korea he's finally got another big league blast. Yeah, got a fastball middle in and rode it on out of here. It's a quick hands on the inside corner. I bet you that one's going to get some play in Korea. <laughs> he was an MVP in Korea last year became quite the star. He was telling us he had the Justin Bieber treatment. 
in Korea could hardly walk down the street could certainly uh, not go to the grocery store. He was mobbed everywhere he went and this is the swing that produced the talent and gave the Brewers the idea that he would be worth a three year deal. Yeah, Fastball in he pulls the hands in pops the hips open and you can see the dugout knew right away that baby's gone. Your call is going to be uh, in Korea. How about that? Have a translator. An international guy now. <laughs> international man of mystery. One and two the count. Ryan Braun fouls it back. They're going to wonder though why you weren't didn't get more excited. <laughs> we we got to ease into it. They got excited on the calls oh, that we did. saw. We we have some great calls of home runs for Thames over the years in Korea. We'll drop those in throughout uh, the season they are very entertaining <laughs> two two to Braun Chopper on the ground slow roller it's going to be a tough play Arenado throws no chance Braun with a base head an infield single oh, there you go swinging bunny he plays so deep with Ryan at the plate well you knew that ball was going to stay fair which there's no chance it's going foul it's going to be a base hit he said one way or another I'm going to get you over there at third base a little swinging bunt able to get a Infield hit for Brawny on the fastball up. There and I don't really no chance. Look how deep he's playing at third. Not even close. So with one out, a man is on following the Thames homer. And here is Travis Shaw. Shaw sends one deep to right. Watching this one fly. There it goes. Two run home run, Travis Shaw. And it's three to nothing, Milwaukee. The Brewer newcomers. With the long balls here in the fourth inning, Thames and now Shaw, and a three spot on the board. Uh, the Brewers felt as though they need more balance in that lineup, so they get a couple of big lefties in that lineup coming through tonight. Two long home runs. Travis Shaw's off to a great start. And on Perez now with one away. Boy, Shaw. Four doubles in his first six at bats of the season. Now a home run. What a start. Perez sharply to short, but on a hop to story. And there is out number two. I'll tell you, Shaw's got a really nice swing. He's got that kind of a swing where you would think with that kind of an approach, he's not going to go into those lengthy offers because he really does keep the bat in the hitting zone a long time. Goes to the opposite field very well and for power. And they make a mistake inside on him. You can see what he can do with that. Two men are out. Here is Nuenheis. Getting the start in center field. The swing of Travis Shaw. And that front foot down before the swing on that high leg kick, and he just rides it on out of here. Nice swing. Nice compact. Level swing for Shaw. Going high, son, able to check his swing there. That's a strike. One and one the count on Kirk. All smiles. One and two the count. Now you talk to players year after year, there is a lot of nerves and anxiety when you join a new team, no matter if you're a 
a younger player, if you're a veteran guy, if you've been an all star, it's just a different experience. And to get right in the mix yeah. has to feel good for those two. You know what impressed me about uh, Eric Thames, amongst a lot of different things, very well spoken. He's, you know, very, uh, He's good, a good guy to talk to. Likes to mix it up with everybody. But you know, he, he signs here as a first baseman, three-year deal. We'll get into it next inning. As Nguyen High strikes out, two home runs in the inning. First, Eric Thames delivers his first, and Bernie hits the slide, a quick trip down that slide, and then Travis Shaw with a two-run blast, his first as a Brewer. Five RBIs for Shaw to start the season. Three nothing crew. Question this year for Eric Thames launches his first home run a no doubter into the Toyota territory and then Shaw answers with a two run home run the Brewers up three nothing as we go to the fifth a quick strike attack for the brew crew and now Peralta pitching with a lead facing Mark Reynolds to start the fifth inning I know the finish of this story for Eric Thames is going to be very disappointing because uh, if I had finished it. Last inning it would have been mm -hmm. okay, but you know he did all that. They asked him to go into the outfield because Aguilar is playing so well, hitting the baseball. He went into the outfield. He did it gracefully with a smile on his face. They asked him about the outfield. He says, "I don't care. I just want to play. I want my at bats. Whatever I need to do." Great attitude. Yeah, great attitude. A guy signs a three-year contract. You figure he's got first base nailed down. But he's willing to move around. You like that? Sensing what is best for the team. Thames had offers from three different leagues after his season last year. He certainly had offers in the KBO in Korea, and there were offers from the Japanese leagues as well, the Japanese major league, which is a higher league, uh, much more comparable to the major leagues. And then there were a few teams pursuing him. In Major League Baseball as well, the Brewers came in with the best offer. So because of his success in Korea, he had plenty of options. He was going to make big dollars wherever he was going to end up. But he wanted the chance to prove he could play and succeed here in the Major League, something that he felt was unfinished business when he left three years ago and came up with the Blue Jays, ended up with the Mariners. And then the three years in Korea. So now he is off to a good start as Peralta strikes out Mark Reynolds. There you go. Fastball. Big fastball up out of the strike zone. The breaking stuff has been what Reynolds has been all over. Strikeout number four, one away in the fifth. And for more on Thames, let's check in with Sophia. Yeah, Thames is a really interesting guy, and just talking to him about his time in Korea, he said one of the things that he really learned to do there was just to 
worry about the process more than the results. He said that was something he really struggled with as a prospect. He said, like a lot of young players, he said, you're worried about, I went 0 for 8. You're worried about, am I going to be sent down, about making it in the big leagues. So he said he really learned to just trust his process. He said, focus on your job, focus on the swing, your head down, good backspin, good BPs. Doing all of that, he said, you can do everything right, and the results may still not be there. So he said, by trusting his his process, he said that really led to him just coming into a better place and allowed him to get back here to the big leagues. I love uh, what he says, Sophia, about getting into a better mental place. You know, he he got into some yoga and just a better thinker, a way to calm himself down, and all of the stories over there from Korea. For example, in Korea, players do not shower at the ballpark. They they are in their uniforms going back to their hotel after games. So you know it feels like more like a yeah. an AAU circuit or right. an amateur circuit where you're going back to the hotel in your uniform. He said you really can't hide when you're in uniform <laughs> okay, <laughs> after a game. I guess. Um, and so there's that element to it. But he loved the culture in Korea. He loved the baseball. They draw huge crowds. There's a lot of fanfare. You become a big celebrity there. So that part of it he has controlled and handled and handled well and thrived even. The other thing about it, you know, when he was in the major leagues, you know, you're a marginal player, you're trying to make it, you're listening to everything everybody's telling you. You know, try this at the plate, you know, do this, this isn't working for you, try, do what I do. And sometimes that can really get, mess you up. I mean, you got to trust what got you to the major leagues. There's a reason why you get to the major leagues, and you got to be you, you know, you can't try and be somebody else. One thing Thames did develop, or two things actually, developed a different swing, different arc which produced a lot more fly balls and of course home runs and then he developed a lot better plate discipline in Korea as well and a lot of that is just maturity as a hitter and getting the regular reps and knowing he's not hitting for a for his livelihood he knew he was going to be in the lineup every day over there learned head at the breaking ball that's for sure they throw a lot of them. 3 2 to Walters and a pop up foul territory and will end up in the seats. We've been asked a lot and we are curious as well how good the baseball is in Korea and the KBO and we've talked to a number of people who have played there and even Thames has discussed it and you get the same answer from those who know that league well it, you never get a well it's it's double A or triple A it's always at the high level there are major league players there are major league caliber talent there and but there aren't that many of them there's a swing and a miss and a strikeout so the depth of high level talent may not exist so you may get a guy who has major league ability and then a number of players who might have single a yep, ability bag, or talent. Right? so you don't really yeah. get a good sense but you put the best players in Korea together and they will certainly compete and contend and we've seen that in the WBC with anybody with any team in any international setting they just don't have a lot of the depth but you don't see the kind of velocity in Korea that you do in the major league certainly or even in Japan but it's a good brand of baseball I had a brother who played there and we just saw Vinny Rotino as a matter of fact Vinny right. Rotino yeah. the former Brewer is in the ballpark tonight he played in Korea and he was in Seoul and we had a good chat with those guys about Korean baseball little roller Arcia makes a nice play and a nice shutdown inning for Peralta with a couple of K's Brewers got him three in the fourth he puts up a zero in the fifth.
great. I'm telling you, those kids. I were, mean, one of those kids was really smart there. The other two, yeah, I don't know. Not so much, right? I think they were intimidated. I think you're scared of a little bit. <laughs> Who's more handsome? Tell me. You got some great moments with the kids. That's a great idea. Now, there's going to be multiple episodes. Yeah. We're already into episode two right now, and uh, there's two full ones. You can see the full thing. It's hilarious. Kids are awesome. I love the fact that you're uh, you're diving in with those kids. They're four, they're five, six, and seven year olds. And, you know, I have a little bit of practice. You know, I got two grandkids. Yeah, yeah. It helped me a lot. You, you know, did a great job. Some would say very patient. I speak better to four, you know, five, six years old than. Yeah. You're more on their level right, with your absolutely, vocabulary. Yeah. That's yes. better said. <laughs> I love those, man. <laughs> I'm glad we could show it tonight. You're picking on me quite a bit in front of the children, though. I'm not sure I appreciate that. Well, I was asked to, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, the, the higher ups, they asked me to, you know, give me a jab every now and again. Manny Pena leads off for the Brewers. If you don't mind, how did that come about? Like, did they ask you yeah. if you were available? And then what went through your mind when well, you first were asked? asked. I would do, it's a Jimmy Kimmel thing. Remember Jimmy Kimmel yeah. would do that? You know, Art Linkletter, you know, did that way back in the uh -huh. day. Half the people in the audience right now don't have any idea who I'm talking about, Art Linkletter. But <laughs> Pena in the right field, that's uh, playable for Gonzalez. From the, out of the mouths of babes, right? I mean, but you know, we, we got over there. It was uh, early in January, and he had uh, six sets of three kids. So three kids, okay. each session. Each session lasted about 45 minutes, and you'd be amazed at some of the <laughs> stuff that they would say. <laughs> it had me just cracking up. I wish they'd have put you uh, maybe next time you go to the elementary school, and and I would like to see you attempt to sit down in one of those little elementary school chairs. Yeah, I'm about to, you would, would you? That, See, that to me is yeah. where we get the real comedy. Not just the sitting down part, but the getting up part. Yeah. Sitting down, not the issue. That's what I want to see. <laughs> and that was fun. I had a really good time with those kids. Good job with all the children who were involved as Arcia pops it foul and out of play. Now, Brewers have done some great work and. All of their marketing campaigns and matter of fact we've got a, one of our buddies in the booth right now Greg Marshall who has produced a number of the Emmy award winning spots commercial spots throughout the last few years. Greg and his group at CI design and. Uh, all under the leadership of Teddy Werner. It's been fun. Soft fly ball over his story and he's got it for the out. And out number two as Chatwood has come back after giving up three in the fourth and two up and two down with the pitcher Peralta coming up. We used to talk a lot about Willie Peralta and his prowess at the plate. Most of that was batting practice prowess. He didn't have much success in games very impressive BP hitter but you remember the details behind his first big league homer yeah he hits his home run and then after the game he was sent down to triple A right thank you very much and he has a base hit here Had a line drive out first time up this time he singles into right field yeah. And Willie Peralta starting to bring it into the lights now. Yeah, you know, more importantly, how about the top of this inning after the Brewers get him four, three runs? He's able to get a three up, three down inning. Really no stress on him at all. That's a nice swing by Willie. Swing hard in case you hit it. And dumps it into right field. He had visions, I think, when he hit that baseball of Carlos Gonzalez coming up and firing one to first base. So Peralta extends the inning and now Jonathan VR will step in. And now the third time through the batting order. Broken bat. And that'll be easy for story to end the inning. Brewers got three in the fourth. Peralta's pitching well. He's working on a three hit shutout through five. And he'll face the top of the order third time through coming up five punch outs for Willie through the first five innings.
Wisconsin is brought to you by the Wisconsin Lottery, reminding you to please play responsibly. By Toyota, let's go places. And by T-Mobile, only T-Mobile lets you stream, post, and share all things MLB. With T-Mobile One, unlimited data means unlimited baseball. 3-0 Brewers, a three-run fourth for Milwaukee. A couple of home runs in that inning. And a reminder, Sunday on Fox, it's the best of the best in NASCAR. They battle it out in the Monster Energy Series from Texas. NASCAR Cup Series action heats up Sunday, noon central on Fox. Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. So interesting development here, Rock. We have Carlos Torres on the mound as we start the sixth. Willie Peralta is out. Pitch count issue for me through 90 pitches. Well, what a start though for Willie Peralta. Just what the Brewers need against this uh, potent offense. Keeping the Rockies off the board. Brewers able to get him a lead. You know, we're looking at that pitch count thinking, all right, maybe he's near the end. But then he came to the plate and hit. Actually got a base hit. You figure, well, that means council is going to let him roll for maybe another inning, but not the case. Five shutout for Peralta. Three hits, five strikeouts. I think it's more or less the fact they only have four guys on the bench. Two outs, nobody on. Perhaps if there was somebody in scoring position, Craig Council probably going to go to the bench, try to drive in a run. Well, Torres comes out and issues a walk to Blackman to start this inning. Let's take a look at some of the highlights of Peralta, who was impressive in his five innings today. No, one walk, five strikeouts. That's the key. I mean, aggressive in the strike zone. He threw some really good breaking pitches. And really, you know, had the Rockies tied up. He got himself in trouble in the third, a leadoff a double by Reynolds. He got caught in a rundown and really didn't have much of a problem after that. So good job by Willie Peralta, 90 pitches, five scoreless innings. Torres in there, strike one on DJ LeMayhew. Carlos is thought to be a late inning high leverage reliever at this point. And I would imagine. We are seeing him in the sixth inning because of the position in the order that the Rockies are in with the top of their batting order now. Yeah, Craig Counts is a big believer in that. He, he will go to the guy in the bullpen that he feels most comfortable with based on where the opposition is in the lineup right now, the top of the order. So you're bringing one of your big guns. Torres had a terrific year last year. His first appearance with the Brewers. Another pickoff attempt close. His first appearance was on opening day. He was claimed. He was with Atlanta in spring training. Hardly had met his teammates before he's pitching in an opening day game last year. And at the time Torres was thought to be. You know a bit of a back. Bullpen pitcher where he's going to get a lot of the fifth six innings swing innings maybe mop up. Boy, did he turn himself into something way more than that last season? All right, 72 appearances last year for Milwaukee. 273 earned run average and pitched on opening day here against Colorado this year. He not only led in appearances last year for the Brewers relievers, another close play at first. Torres also led the relief corps in innings pitched last season. 72 games, 82 and a third innings. And an opponent's batting average of 217 a year ago. And he misses badly. It's going to move a runner to second on a wild pitch. Torres likes to throw that cut fastball. He's going to throw that just about every pitch. He's got a breaking ball to go with it. He will force seam it inside once in a while, but. About a just about every pitch is going to be a cutter from Carlos Torres. That one got away from him. Bit of a shaky start to the sixth inning. Lead off walk. Now behind on LeMahieu. And they'll ask if he went. He did not. Three and one.
LeMay who hit 348 last year to win the National League batting crown. Full count. They might have chased ball four right there. Backup cutter. Got in on his hands. Torres went a scoreless inning, a sixth inning appearance on opening day. Allowed one hit. Full count with a runner at second, and that misses outside. Back to back walks. Just like that, the Rockies in their high powered offense bring the tying run to the plate. Yep, and the big guys coming up, three and four in the batting order. And Derek Johnson, the pitching coach, on his way out. Don't normally see Torres struggle with his command like this. And now he's going to have to deal with Cargo and Arenado and Story. Ten pitches for Torres, eight of them out of the strike zone. He's only thrown two strikes in his first ten pitches. Can't get a feel for that cut fastball. And he's going to keep throwing it. That's his pitch. Carlos Gonzalez. It's a dangerous spot for the Brewers. Peralta mowing them down through five innings, taken out after 90 pitches. On the ground, Thames has it to his feet, throwing a second out there. Torres covers, safe at first. Wow, what a play that was. And only the speed of Carlos Gonzalez. Boy, that was a heck of a play by Thames. Able to smother it, got up quickly, made a great throw over to Arcia, and they almost turned a double play. Brewers want to take another look at this one. What a heck of a play by Thames. Look at him get up and make a good throw. And only the speed of Carlos Gonzalez avoids the double play. Foot on the bag now. Ball, yep, that's a good call by first base umpire Alan Porter. Sorry, that's good speed down that first baseline. Well, the Brewers don't get two, but that's got to give them a little bit of a jolt on a spectacular defensive play all the way around. How about Torres? Yeah. Busting it to the bag to cover, knowing Thames had no chance to get there. And Arcia trusting Torres to get there. He had to get rid of it before he got to first base. So the putout goes three to six at second base. First and third now for Arenado. The National League home run leader last year, tied with Chris Carter for the most. Well, it's all about trusting. Check this out. He gets rid of it before Torres is actually there. And, and because he's not a first baseman, not the big stretch, that might have been why Gonzalez was able to get into first base safely. I'd love to get a radar gun reading on that throw from Arcee at a first base. <laughs> that had to be in 90 plus. Swing and a miss. He tied him up. And it's quickly 0 and 2 on Arnado. Forty one homers last year. He's led the National League in RBIs the last two years. On the ground. And the flip to second out throw to first in time a double play. Slow developing double play but Arcia and his arm make up for it. And Torres is out of the inning. Now the Brewers are playing a little defense.
the Colorado Rockies game three of the season and that three run burst in the fourth inning Eric Dames was part of that hit a solo home run to get the Brewers on the board in the fourth and then Travis Shaw with a two run home run Tyler Chatwood continues starting his sixth inning and the heart of the order for the Brewers coming up Braun to follow and then Shaw Jimmy John's delivery of the game the two newcomers Eric Dames first launched one into the Toyota territory and then Shaw each with their first home runs as Milwaukee Brewers. And for Thames his first home run in the majors since September 23rd of 2012. That's exactly why the Brewers. Got them both to provide some left handed pop in that batting order very right hand dominant last year with the Brewers. Not so much this year. Two two pitch in the dirt three balls two strikes. Well, a good job by Carlos Torres working out of a mess in the sixth inning back to back walks with Gonzalez and Arenado coming up and almost turned one double play and then did turn a double play to win the inning as Thames hits one sharply to LeMahieu and there is out number one. And it could have been a lot worse right if that ball gets by Thames that ball that Gonzalez hit. Nice play to get the lead out or the force out at second base and keep the double play alive. Well, Ryan Braun last night hit the first home run of the season for the Brewers. Powerball home run number one for Braun. And now 14 home runs shy of 300 in his career in year number 11. 285 homers in his first 10 years in the big leagues. It's not bad, is it? My math would tell me that's 28 and a half <laughs> homers a year. What a career. All time franchise leader in homers. Passed Robin Yount last season. Braun hit 30 last year. Drove in 92. And one of his best seasons, given everything that was going on with the back surgery and the offseason before. Last season. And the fact I think they didn't have the protection in the lineup that he's had in the past. You know, Luke Perry got traded. You know, in, uh, in July and. That makes a big difference. We don't have guys behind you. Pretty good list. Franchise history with. Braun and the kid Robin Yount. Prince Fielder third. Wonder how Prince is doing these days and his retirement. That neck injury forced him to retire last year, and got to be tough. Got to be real tough. And, and for a guy who loves the game as much as Prince Fielder does, yeah. I, I would imagine that's a very difficult thing for him. Love to compete. I mean, he wants to play not only every game but every inning of every game. Full count to Braun with one away. Sixth inning from Miller Park. It was a quick strike for the Brewers. Chadwood was rolling along, and then those three runs came in a, in a flash. And that is a ball down and out. Braun with a good eye draws a walk. And a man on with one away. Travis Shaw coming up. Yeah, first walk of the game for Chetwood. He's been throwing a lot of strikes. First year skipper Bud Black. Looking at the replay of that last pitch. Up on the big screen. So here is Shaw. How about his season already? Five hits, four doubles, and now a home run. <laughs> Five RBIs. Had four doubles in his first six at bats as a Brewer. 
which puts him into Brewers That's history. Balk. Yeah, the balk. Chadwood turned. Not sure what happened. He lost the grip or what, but that is going to send Braun to second base. Well, that's a big deal with all the ground balls that Chatwood gets. I'm not sure why he didn't throw it. Looks like he had a grip on it. Mark Reynolds saying throw it. But it's a balk. <laughs> that's one base you've never been able to fake to. First base. Used to be able to fake to third. They eliminated that a few seasons ago. You can still fake to second base. For Travis Shaw, that start to the season with the four doubles over his team's first two games, that is a franchise record to start a season. Paul Molitor owned the previous record, he had three doubles. In his first two games in the 1987 season. Opening day catcher 1987 for the Brewers. Bill Schroeder. And Bill Schroeder. Had one of three doubles on opening day in 1987. Really? Remember that? No I don't. Really? No. I don't. I don't, I don't remember doubles. I remember homers. There are certain categories that when you enter into you don't forget. The Brewers had three doubles in 87 on opening day. Yount, Molitor, Schroeder. Which one doesn't belong? <laughs> <laughs> Where's Waldo? You eliminate one of those. That's right? not true. Which one would it be? All three represented in the ballpark currently. Two numbers hanging up in the rafters, and yeah. then you sitting here He's next sitting to me. Here. He's sitting here with you, yeah. As Shaw chases one, and down it goes on strikes. Yep. There's two of them. Retired numbers, Hall of Famers, and then Uke was there in '87. There's the there's the third. Yeah. Wearing yep. his media badge. Yeah. And you have to wear it these days. Have you noticed? I do. Get in the ballpark. You scan it in. I've got mine on right now. Yeah. Right on my pocket. Mine's in my bag. Need to put that on. We're gonna have to ask you to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Hernan Perez now. You don't remember opening day 87? No. And Rock, that's very disappointing. Who do we play? I don't know. We'll come up with that. I mean, I mean, it's not that big a deal. I mean, well, it's opening day. I remember it's... starting opening day. Oh. I remember the. I forget who we played, but my sources tell me you started in 85 and 87. Yeah. Now, because you are a service first catcher. Maybe the fact that Teddy Higuera was the starting pitcher that day will jog some memories. I think 85 we were playing the Red Sox. Okay. That was your first opening day start? I believe it was, yeah. I think now that's one Sox. to remember. Yeah. By 87, it was old hat. Nothing was ever old hat for me. <laughs> Perez goes up the middle, a base hit. And here comes Braun, will be sent home. He will score. Nobody at second, and Perez is in. Hustles his way to second base. Braun scores. It is four to nothing. Milwaukee. Well, somebody napping in the middle of the infield. That's just good heads up base running by Perez. There's that guy again shooting one right back through the middle to score another run. Well, this guy can hit. He can hit and he drives in a run and not satisfied with that. Able to get into second base. Heads up. He's running with his head up. And able to get into second base, our Badger Mutual Insurance run of the game. Hustle double for Hernan Perez and an RBI. Comes with two outs, gives the Brewers a 4 0 lead. As Neuenheis takes a strike. So the balk uh, proving costly for Chatwood. Neuenheis has struck out twice. Looking for his first hit of the season.
Kirk was a terrific hitter at Miller Park last year. His splits jump off the page at you. Last year at home in 64 games he had 290. And 11 of his 13 home runs came at Miller Park. Drove in 31 runs in 64 games here. Compared to his road splits of 127 for a batting average, two homers, 13 RBIs in 61 games. A home game only performer. Loves hitting at Miller Park. A little bit late. For whatever reason, he can't explain it. Sees the ball well. And that left handed swing plays well in this ballpark. And a terrific run last year on the home schedule. And there's no explaining why. You know, a guy would have splits like that. I mean, it's one thing to, to hit well at home, but. It's another thing to try to explain why he did not on the road. This is a good hitter's ballpark, first of all. And you're playing against a team and a group of players with the Rockies who take more heat and scrutiny about the splits than any other roster in the big leagues because of their ballpark and the size of it. It's it's a wild ride offensively at Coors Field. Neuenheis is from Denver. And a pickoff play. Close out. They got him. Perez went feet first and is picked off. And I think Council wants to take a quick peek. Bang, bang play at second base. Story comes in behind Perez. And I think he got him right there. If it holds up, it will yeah, end the inning. Yeah, yeah. He, he dug in. He couldn't get back to the bag. So no challenge. Inning over. Perez drives in a run, but is picked off. And we go to the seventh. at Miller Park and you can join the Brewers Community Foundation and their season long effort to make a difference in our community by purchasing 50 50 raffle tickets at every home game proceeds will support nonprofit organizations in the areas of health education recreation and basic needs one lucky fan takes home half of the game day ticket sales all right Sophia thanks here we go to the seventh inning Trevor Story leads off for the Rockies Torres is back out there for a second inning yeah. after Walking the tight rope in the sixth, he issued back to back walks and then a couple of ground balls, including a double play ball from Arenado to get him out of the inning. 
Four nothing now. Brew crew after the Perez RBI. Did a little digging about opening day. We were talking about 87. We played the Red Sox. It was Bob mm. Stanley against Teddy Higuera. I see. Now you're starting to remember. Now I remember the first inning. Milder led off the game with a double. Yount singled. Brewers up one nothing. I think that was kind of a foreshadowing of the rest of uh, you know my career with those two. When did your double come. I don't remember. 85 we played the White Sox. <laughs> It's amazing the stuff you don't remember one inning and then you come up with the next inning. I don't remember the double. Probably a jam shot down the right field line. <laughs> <laughs> Freezing cold at County <laughs> Stadium. Right. Big swing and a miss. Down he goes. Torres with a strikeout. Yeah, whatever he was searching for in the first two batters, he has found. Yeah, he came up with it uh, once. Uh, Carlos Gonzalez came to the plate. He started to throw that for strikes and get some good movement on it. We hear all these stories about Robin Yount and Paul Molitor. And you played with him for a lot of years. What would you say, aside from what we saw between the lines, right? What mm -hmm. would you say sticks out to you the most about, about those two? Yeah, just the voracious competitors. I mean they, they wanted to excel every single day and they did everything they could to get out on the field particularly young. I remember being in a clubhouse at Old County Stadium and, and Robin Young could barely walk into the clubhouse and after a couple of hours in the training room and getting in the whirlpool and, and getting ready he'd be able to run out there at, at shortstop and play a game. Nine nine guys out of ten would probably say they couldn't go out there and play. Mm. Molitor was the same way. They both were leaders, but in different ways. Who was vocal? I mean, was there a lot of rah Robin, rah? And Robin. Robin was more vocal. A lot of discussion, I mean, like in your face, kind of. No, not so no. much that. Just you know, good-natured stuff. Oh, okay. You know, marching up and down the dugout before the game, and you know, high-fiving everybody and, and getting everybody going. And Robin, or I should say, Molitor was more the cerebral guy. He was the guy that was always the uh, the best bridge player. He and si him and, he and Simmons. <laughs> oh, is that right? But they would get into some arguments in the clubhouse. I mean, you kind of watch back. I mean, they were both that, that whole group of guys that 82, you know, 80s, you know, that group of right. players are in the World Series. I mean, just in, incredible competitors. And the way those guys used to get on each other, it was amazing. Well, that's why you're such an interesting gap between today's player because you're around the ball club every day. And this is uh, Rock just had his 30th. Opening day as a member of the Brewers, either as a player yeah. or as a broadcaster in between Rock and Bob Euchre. As Torres walks Para. Between you two, it's a fascinating journey down the history of the Milwaukee Brewers. And you getting to play alongside two Hall of Famers, future Hall of Famers at the time. And by then established superstars in the game as well right I remember my first game in Texas this was 1983 I walked into the clubhouse in Texas and there were four future Hall of Famers in that clubhouse Yount Molitor mm -hmm. Don Sutton and Raleigh and Raleigh right OK I mean that's wow. incredible if you think about it now at that time at that moment 1983 did you have a sense oh yeah you knew those guys were going yeah. Oh yeah. Well, certainly Raleigh and Sutton. And there should be another one that, that should be in the Hall of Fame. Ted Simmons. Ted Simmons. I agree with you on that. Yeah, for sure. The numbers stack up for Simba. Man, what a ride. Yeah. Robin made an appearance with the Brewers at spring training. And of course, Paul Molitor managing the Twins. I think Teddy's still a scout. I saw Simba in the Cardinal red coat. He's in the Cardinals Hall of Fame. And you know how the Cardinals have opening day and they bring back as many of their legends as possible. And I did see him on the field greeting the current roster and their, their famous opening day ceremonies. It was good to see him. He looks good. What a baseball mind. Yeah, he's something. Ted Simmons. Reynolds in the air off the end of the bat. And VR waving off 
Perez for the second out. Two gone in the inning with a runner at first now. And Torres will face Tony Walters. Anytime you start talking about years gone by and it's easy to put those players in a capsule and realize well those were Hall of Fame players and, and now you look around baseball today and you start to think all right who is projecting as a potential Hall of Fame player mm -hmm. whose numbers will be retired from this group that's one of the reasons this this rebuild moment in time for this organization is so interesting you look at a guy like Arcia and you know even Ryan Braun who's now in year 11 is this a guy who we don't know how long his career will go. He is approaching 300 home runs. Right. No kidding. I mean, he could play 15, 20 years, kind of numbers he might put up. And of all these young players that we're seeing now, are we going to be talking about him in 20 years as among the greats in the organization? In the air to left center, going to be run down by Neuenheis and Torres. Works two scoreless innings, bridging the gap. Stretch time. We go to the bottom of the seventh for nothing Brewers. Seventh inning. Brewers with three in the fourth. Couple of home runs, Thames and Shaw. And then Perez with a two out RBI single, uh, make it a double in the sixth inning. And we have a new pitcher on the mound for Colorado, Jordan Lyles, a former Astro, out of the bullpen. He's got good stuff, but it's awfully difficult, of course, field throughout the season. 583 earned run average, 40 games for him. He only allowed the four home runs at 291. Opponent batting average for the left or the right hander. Kirk Neuenheis on the Powerball home run leaderboard a year ago had 13, 11 of those coming here at Miller Park. Braun led the way with 30. Neuenheis was at the plate when Perez was picked off. So he gets a fresh count. Rockies have a new battery. Dustin Garneau will come in to catch his first playing time of the season. And Lyles making his first appearance. Chatwood goes six innings, seven hits, gives up four runs all earned, had a walk and five strikeouts. Yeah. Brewers are trying to hang a loss on him for the first time in their few matchups. You've been 2 0. Oh. And Jordan Lyles had been a starter in his first five seasons, and last year strictly out of the bullpen. First time out of the bullpen for him, struggled a bit.
swing and a miss. New and high strikes out for the first out of the seventh inning. Hey, tonight's time of the game winner, the country in in Rice Lake. They call the Brewers by 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. They get 40 tickets to a Friday night game in the Miller Lite beer pen. They saw for courtesy of the Tavern League of Wisconsin and Miller Lite. One away here is Manny Pena. Brewer catcher. Pena is 0 for 2 tonight. Has shown a very good throwing arm behind the plate. Caught a runner stealing. Should have had another one. Pena yesterday came in. He got two at bats, but his pinch hit appearance had a base hit, drove in a run. It was one for two yesterday, despite not starting the game. Pinch hit and then remained in the game in a 6 5 Brewer loss. Catcher that can hit. Pena's been around a while. He was in the big leagues with the Royals. 2011 2012 just about the time Salvador Perez started to hit the scene and there was no room at the end in the catching position that ball scalded into center field but Blackman is right there for the out it looked like it had a knuckling effect in center field hit that one right on the screws you can not hit it any better than that. So two men are out and here comes Arcia. Orlando with his first triple of the year. Came in the third inning. He rifled one into left center field and hit that angled wall in deep left center and Arcia motored all the way around. Garcia carrying on that tradition of terrific shortstops from Venezuela and many expect him to be a hitter with gap power just like this. He reminds me so much of Alcides Escobar when he mm -hmm. first arrived. Yeah. Same kind of structure and how you define him as a player slick fielder great arm. Still young he's going to buff up. He's only 22. Yeah. Incredible talent. Arcia will turn 23 in August. Call it his age 22 season. His brother Osvaldo had some time in the big leagues. Notably with the Twins, but a much different player. Big power hitter, left handed hitter, Osvaldo. Last seen with the Padres. I'm not sure who he is with these days. He's with the Diamondbacks. He's, yeah, he's with Arizona. That's yeah, I right. I saw him in spring training. He's in the minor leagues with Arizona. Ground ball to short. Story winds it up. And in time for the out. Three up, three down for Jordan Lyles. To the eighth we go. The Brewers lead four to nothing. Day three of the MLB season.
Fox Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light beer. Crowd of nearly 22,000. Game number three of the championship season, as Bob Euchre would say. And the Brewers looking for their first win of the year. New pitcher rock for the Brewers after Carlos Torres goes two scoreless. It is Corey Knable on for the eighth. A good job by Carlos Torres. Well, making his first appearance on an opening day roster this year. I mean, made the team out of spring training. Pitched on Monday. Two thirds of an inning with a strikeout. Let you see his numbers from a year ago. A 468 earned run average for Knebel and 35 appearances. He's got that big four seam fastball and that overhand curveball. Canable bouncing from the Tigers to the Rangers and here to Milwaukee. Late inning hard throwing reliever or late game hard throwing reliever I should say. Dustin Garneau will bat for the first time. Came in last inning. On a double switch which puts him in the nine spot and he's not wasted any time. Jam shout out to Arcia and there is out number one one pitch. One away for Corey Knable. Yeah, it's all about throwing strikes for Corey, particularly with that curveball. Able to get in and out quickly with the big fastball in on the hands of Garno. When that curveball is working for him, he can be virtually unhittable. When he gets into problems, is when he can't really get a feel for the curve. Hitters just wait on that fastball. You might say trouble with the curve. Trouble with the curve. Yeah, good movie. Charlie Blackman takes a strike. You remember that movie, Clint Eastwood? But you don't remember an opening day double. Well, I saw the movie much more recently than the double. <laughs> I mean, it was an okay movie. <laughs> Any baseball movie is a good one. It's not like an Academy Award winning no, movie. No, it was no, it's no. just a good fun movie. But, but the double just was. Just saying. The double is. That's that a moment. That was Academy Award That's a winning. moment in time right there. You really disappointed him. I'm a little you? bit. I'm actually a little concerned about what happened between then and now that you would forget that. It's a lot of. Whatever has happened. I've seen a lot to of kill doubles. some of those memories. I've seen. <laughs> I've seen oh, I see where you're going. <laughs> a lot of pitches, a lot of doubles between now and then. I honestly don't remember. I, I, I apologize. Don't know how I'm going to be able to make it up to you. You've seen a lot of doubles, and you've seen double a lot, a double, often, as well. What kind of double are you talking about? <laughs> Three versions of double vision. Hit the one in the middle, Rock. 2 2 to Blackman. Well, let me think about it. You know, when I get mm -hmm. to the ballpark uh, Friday, I, I think I'll, I'll remember it. I'll be able to give you a good uh. detailed description of the double. All right. Right. Maybe go into a little psychotherapy, try That'll to draw, be, bring that memory up. That'll be our pregame hit before the Chicago series. You, know, you could always just make something up. They get you on that these days. There's video somewhere. Yeah, oh, really? Even back then. It's a kinescope. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that long ago. VHS tape, maybe. 87. Three quarter tape. Full count to Blackman. Got him. Kadabel with the fastball strikes him out. Second out of the inning. 97 with the heater for out number two. You know what? Maybe MLD, MLB.com, Matt Bat might have the version of the double. You get live broadcast, scoring updates, breaking news, and more right at your fingertips. The official app of the Brewers download at bat today free for your smartphone or tablet. We have this thing in television called the the melt and that's what. You put together all the highlights of the game. 
and you put it into the melt and then you keep it right and I'm, I'm imagining this moment in 1987 when whoever's in charge of the melt saying well we got a double from Molitor and a double from Yount. Which one are we going to eliminate. We're good. <laughs> and I'm feeling like yours might be left on the edit room floor. I hope that's not the case. But and you know what I don't even remember it so it never <laughs> happened. Yeah. I mean I can remember doubles like from Little League. Maybe I should call Bob Stanley and ask him <laughs> where I hit it. I bet he remembers. DJ LeBayhew with two outs. Look out. High fastball drops him. It is interesting. You can ask any pitcher anytime anywhere who the who hit the furthest or longest home run off of that particular pitcher and he'll remember. Yeah. You may not like the memory and you may get a mean stare but they'll remember. And it's usually a quick response. Who hit the longest home run off you. Oh that's easy. You remember all your doubles. Every one of them Every all three of them. them all three of them. <laughs> I can probably remember all the homers though. Go through step by step. You hit a lot of home runs, especially well, hit, in the minor leagues. Yeah, I mean, I don't remember those. Oh. Full count, two outs. Canable trying to go one, two, three in the eighth. And he missed, and he walks LeMayhew. Always Keeps dangerous. the door open. Miller Lite what's on tap no television tomorrow. That's why Rock and I are emptying out all of our material here tonight. Sinzatella and Anderson on the mound Antonio Sinzatella making his major league debut and he is a very highly touted prospect. Rockies are excited about him and yeah, Chase Anderson really had a good spring good end of the season last year. He looked very good against the White Sox in the exhibition game. Over the weekend. So, no TV. You'll be able to catch that on Brewers Radio. Bob Euchre, Jeff Levering, they'll bring it to you. I think the Rockies are televising, so if you have the MLB app, you might be able to get the pictures with it. There's Mr. Baseball. Euchre, still at it since 1971, yeah. going strong. And there's something else. Kent Sommerfeld up there, producer and engineer. Do it as ever. You. Well, the Brewers are keeping the Rockies at arm's length, but this is a key hitter for Canable. A very explosive lineup. With the Rockies, and you don't want to let them up for air. Swing at a miss. One and two the count. 95 on a fastball. Let's see if we can get that curveball down and get a swing and a miss. As fast as 98 with the fastball, that curveball has been at 81. That's a big discrepancy in velocity to adjust to for a hitter. The one two. Two two now. Look at ahead to the Brewer eighth. Pitcher spot. And then the top of the order VR and Dames. Dames hit his first home run as a Brewer earlier tonight as did Travis Shaw. Part of a three run fourth inning. Shaw's was a two run blast. Erdon Perez has the other Brewer RBI that came with a two out double in the sixth. Four nothing two outs man on he takes off and a bouncer out to VR nice easy hop hitting over Knable puts up a scoreless inning in the eighth and the Brewers trying to shut out Colorado bottom of the eighth Eric Thames will hit launched his first big league home run since 2012. We'll see him next after this.
the bat in the eighth four to nothing Willie Peralta set the pace from the beginning five shutout innings hope to catch up with him after the game in the clubhouse we will with Craig Council get full post game reaction all coming up after the ball game Brewers live post game presented by Ascension Brian all right Craig thanks looking forward to that and Eric Thames will certainly be discussed here tonight big performance from Thames. Four nothing Brewers. Jesus Aguilar pinch hitting for the pitcher Canable who works a scoreless eighth. Good work tonight from Carlos Torres who got himself into quick trouble in the sixth inning but ends up with two scoreless despite three walks. Got a key double play off the bat of Arenado. That was in the sixth inning. Willie Peralta started the game went five scoreless struck out five. And was sharp 90 pitches. That is. Big fastball tonight. Matter of fact his first fastball of the game was 98 miles an hour. And hit 99. And he was amped up tonight but he was under control with it. With good breaking pitches. To a couple of curveballs for strikes. And he needed it. He needs the confidence going forward. Second inning for Jordan Lyles. Tyler Chadwood, the Rocky starter, went six, giving up four earned runs on the hook for the loss. Hey. Jesus Aguilar got a start at first base yesterday, already has a couple of hits. On the ground, backhanded story, jump throw, and it is late. Pulled Reynolds off the bag, and that'll be a base hit for Aguilar. This keeps hitting. I tell you, that's a good play by Story. If that throws on the mark, he's going to get an out. Aguilar able to beat it down there at first base. That yeah, cut fastball got it down on the end, but. And far enough away from story where he really couldn't get off a very good throw and beat it for a base hit. So top of the order now here's VR with a man at first Brewers trying to add to their lead. Shows bunt and bunted right through it right off the mask of the catcher. That hockey style goalie mask. The tools of brilliance. Right in the forehead. That was a direct shot. You wonder why guys don't remember doubles? <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> a few foul balls later. <laughs> Just bringing it all home. Yeah. BR singled in the first inning, had a base hit to right. One for three tonight. His second hit of the season. Shows Bunt again and takes a strike. One and two. In the Rockies' ninth, they'll have Arenado, Story, and Para. Do up four, five, and six. And we might get our first look at Neftali Feliz. Not a safe situation. But he needs to throw. Yeah, he needs, he needs the work. Two balls, two strikes. And VR a little bit late, fouls it away. Oh, 
Brewers will have a new player on their roster come Friday Nick Franklin. Utility man. Best suited at second base but a switch hitter that can play all over infield and outfield. That was a waiver claim. Today by the Brewers. Michael Blazik taken off the 40 man roster and. Someone will have to go off the major league roster. Franklin is out of options so he'll. Have to stay in the big leagues Aguilar takes off and VR sends one to right. And that ball is up and out of here a two run shot VR. First home run of the season and the third of the game for Milwaukee. Two run blast makes it six nothing Brew Crew. Yeah, that was a nice at bat he got the counter. Three and two he got one down and in and just gulped it out of here line drive. Over the head of Gonzalez and right. Brewers scoring runs like they usually do with the home run ball. That was uh, a good pitch to hit down and in. Lefties like it right there. And question is, is it high enough? It was, and Brewers extend the lead. Well, quite bad on a 95 mile an hour fastball as Thames takes a big cut. Trying to jump on that first pitch. At the plate, presented by Wendy's. One for three for Thames, including his first Brewer homer. Now a liner into center field, a base hit. And the hits are coming for Milwaukee now. Well, we thought, Rock, we would give our friends in Korea a little taste of what a home run <laughs> sounds like in the big leagues from Eric Thames. <laughs> Just trying to make Eric feel at home. That's all he's heard on his home run yeah, calls. That's, pretty, that's some pretty fancy that's, work down in the truck. That's big time. Tricks and editing. Yeah. I think that becomes a thing now for the rest of the year. It sounds way better than the way I called it. <laughs> You're right. He was excited, <laughs> wasn't he? <laughs> I'm going to have to brush up on some of the Korean home run slang. That was good stuff. Braun, little tapper foul. In any language, when you hit a ball like Eric Dames did in the fourth inning, there's reason for excitement. Mm -hmm. There was certainly excitement in that dugout after he hit it. Mm -hmm. Ryan Braun. A six nothing Brewer lead. I've got to ask Eric all the video that I watched of Thames' home runs and you can go on YouTube. There are a ton of videos on him and some of his magical moments in Korea but there was always a guy he was a real jovial happy guy that was always at the end of the greeting line in the dugout and they had a secret handshake and I want to find out more about that guy because they obviously were good friends and they had. He was always the last guy to welcome him as Braun strikes out. Foul tip right into the middle of the catcher. And the first out of the inning. Here's Travis Shaw now. Three home runs tonight. Shaw with a two run blast in the fourth. Shaw takes a strike. Shaw from the Columbus area, Ohio. 
a little town called Washington Courthouse is the name of the town he's from. Huh. Small town, huh? Small town. USA. Low bro. I think he said 12,000. I said, what do you say? Do you say you're from the courthouse or do you say you're from Washington or? He goes, no, I just say from from outside Columbus. <laughs> <laughs> two two pitch a little bit low I've never heard of a town I, you know I, I look at a lot of hometowns in my line of work and I've never heard of that one yeah it's a first for me a town that is called courthouse Washington courthouse strangest one you've heard I think so on the ground with the shift on might be two and it is two and the Rockies are out of the inning, but the Brewers get a two run home run from Jonathan VR at six nothing and that means it's Taylor Youngman time. We go to the ninth. Brewers lead six to nothing looking for their first one of the year Brewers baseball tonight on Fox Sports Wisconsin presented by Potawatomi Hotel and Casino let the games begin Brewers won five out of six from the Rockies last year in their season series and trying to get the first W on the board in a six nothing game Neftali Feliz was sat down and in comes Taylor Youngman appearing for the first time. Yeah, Youngman had a terrific spring. 13 appearances, you know, out of the bullpen. He picked up a save at a 245 earned run average, earning his way onto this roster for opening week. First opportunity here this year. Youngman, a former first round draft pick by the Brewers, 2011, had a very good spring training. See the strikeouts at 14 more strikeouts and innings pitched. Unusual delivery that crossfire action. Comes down to his ability to throw that curveball for strikes. We talked about that with Corey Knable. Even more important for Youngman. Two balls, no strikes. Nolan Arenado leading the way for the Rockies on the ground with the shift on. Arcia all the way across the diamond in time for out number one. These are two of the youngest rosters in the majors. Brewers, as of their opening day roster, have the third youngest. 28 years and 15 days. And the Rockies, the fifth youngest roster, 28 years, 64 days. If you're wondering, the Reds are the youngest team in baseball. Then the Padres. 
And then the Brewers. Rockies look like a team that is ready to contend. Brewers would love to put themselves in a position to contend this year. I think most looking at next year, maybe the year after, there's no real definitive timeline on that, but there's enough talent here. The story lines one to left, well hit, and that's going to bounce off the base of the wall. Story's on his way to second. Here comes the throw, and the tag not in time. A yeah, heck of a play by Braun out there in left field. Played it beautifully off the wall, threw a one hopper into VR just a little bit off the mark, but a good throw based on where he was. No challenge. Doesn't mean we can't look at the replay. Braun, very skilled in left field. He knows that territory well. Quick release and just a little bit off the mark, or that would have been an out. Pretty close as it was. And good effort by VR as well. Almost. So it's a one out double. Brewers trying to keep a shutout intact. Looking to shut out the Rockies for the fourth time in franchise history. It'd be the second time here at Miller Park if they can do it. Christian Adamas pinch hitting and a wave and a miss. One and one the count. Visit at the mound. Pena has caught a good game today. Trying to work Youngman through this. Has not been a shutout of the Rockies since the 06 season for Milwaukee. That was the last one. That was a 1 0 win August of 06. Yeah, not an easy thing to do to shut out this offense. He shut out only five times all last year. Two and two the count. Adamas a swing and a miss down he goes Youngman with a strikeout nice curveball key to his success being able to throw that for a strike that was a dandy look at the break on it there's your grip straight down and Adamas over the top of it started out of the strike zone and ended up right down the middle Well, that tail on that curveball gives you an idea of the loop an out away from a shutout the Brewers had seven last year and Mark Reynolds who's been hot in this series standing in the way two gone six nothing Milwaukee would be a combined four hitter started by Peralta who went five. Last time the Brewers shut out the Rockies in Milwaukee was in the County Stadium days. Last season at County Stadium 2000. So this would be the first at Miller Park against Colorado. Slings one in for a strike two and one. Story at second.
in there. Two and two on Reynolds. Crowd is up trying to see this one to the end. Taylor Youngman a strike away from the Brewers first win and Reynolds is late but fouls it away. Day game tomorrow 1240 first pitch. And then the Cubs are coming in Friday we'll be back on Fox Sports Wisconsin for that one against the reigning world champs. 2 2 and it's a little bit low. Full count. Don't forget Brewers Live coming your way as soon as we're done here. Greg Kashawn, Jerry Augustine standing by. Sophia will have interviews. Youngman deals and a bouncer. And it is through for a base hit and coming in to score is Story and the shutout is lost. First run of the game for Colorado comes on a two out two strike single by Reynolds and he continues to do damage against Milwaukee in this series. Wow. A fastball in able to muscle it in the hole between third and short and the Brewers up six to one. Got it a little bit off the end of the bat, but put it in a pretty good spot. Right through the hole between Shaw and Arcia. And the Rockies are still alive. Two outs in the ninth. Here's Steven Cardulo. Way inside. Two and nothing the count. Mark Reynolds has two hits in all three games of this opening series. And an RBI with two outs wipes out the shutout. Cardulo takes ball three. Pena's on his way out. Hey, while we have a moment here, I want to send out our condolences from our Fox Sports Wisconsin crew to Matt LePay. He lost his father, Salvador, and uh, unexpected passing of his dad. And we're thinking about you, Matt, and the rest of the family. Tough news on this Wednesday. Yeah. Happened last night. So rest in peace, Salvador LePay. Great baseball man, great baseball fan. Three balls and a strike on Cardulo. That one's in there. Three and two. Well, Reynolds will start with the pitch. There he goes. Cardulo fouls it away. Another payoff and another foul ball. By the way, tomorrow we'll be uh, participating in the Bob and Brian Radio Thon for the MAC Fund. Tomorrow, wish them the best. Hope to raise a lot of money for that group. And the MAC Fund is always near and dear to our hearts. Yeah.
And Yodwin hits him. So this one continues. Two on now. A run is in. Two hits and a hit batter. And Neftali Feliz starting to get loose. And Derek Johnson is on his way out. And five run lead. One more base runner becomes a save situation. Closer comes in with a tying run on deck. Hoover doesn't get to that. And one more base runner, then you got to deal with the top of the order. That's right. the problem. Yep. And the way this Rockies team can swing the bat, you don't even want to start dipping your toe in that water. So Garneau will hit. This will be a second plate appearance. He came in on a double switch in the eighth inning. The catcher. And this is the man that Youngman wants to get. 6-1 Brewers. That mound can be a very lonely place. Youngman trying to fight through this ninth inning. Yeah, a lot of fastballs. Uh, most of the pitches that he's missing with are the fastball. Remember that good curveball he threw to Adamas to strike him out. This crowd getting antsy here. Rocky's not helping him out either. Blackman do next. Two balls, no strikes on Dustin Garneau. That one's in there. Youngman was a very hard thrower in college at the University of Texas. He was an upper 90s pitcher. The best college player in the country won the Golden Spikes Award 2011 for the Longhorns. Has lost that big velocity. Has tried to remake himself from a starter to a reliever. And a big pitch here. You want to go three and two. It's the guy you want. Two on, two out, two two count. The backup catcher. Here it comes and he threw it over his back and threw the curveball and just didn't have much of a feel for it did he. Well, now you got to throw a strike. Charlie Blackman waiting his turn on deck. This will be the last hitter for Youngman. Yeah he either finishes the game or. Felice comes in to try to nail down the save against what would be the top of the order. There are two outs. It has been a struggle here in the ninth. Only one across. Runners go and a swing and a foul out of play. Another full count. Youngman has thrown 31 pitches in this ninth inning. 3 2 comes. Ball four. Bases are loaded. And we're going to get our first look at Neftali Feliz. Yeah, the last thing that the Brewers wanted to have to deal with was bringing the closer. Youngman not able to get the job done with a 6 0 lead. So Craig Council will make a pitching change. And Feliz is coming on. The new Brewer closer will get his chance. It is a 6-1 game. But the tying run is on deck. Pitching change at Miller Park. 
save situation coming. A difficult one to obtain, and Craig Councils had to go to the bullpen for his closer, Neftali Feliz, coming from the Pirates a season ago, signed as a free agent with a chance to close games, and he'll get his first opportunity here tonight. Yeah, familiar with the role back with the Texas Rangers, had three consecutive years, big save seasons, had Tommy John surgery. Coming back, velocity was back at the end of the last year with the Pittsburgh Pirates. We're going to nail this one down. He needs one out. Well, as far as safe situations go, this is probably one of the better scenarios you could have for a closer, but it is his first appearance in a Brewers uniform. And you would imagine there are some nerves stirring up with Neftali Feliz. Former rookie of the year with the Rangers. Closer in the World Series, a couple of seasons. He's been in the big spots. Bases full of Rockies. Blackman at the plate. And the first pitch is in there for a strike. And 97 miles an hour. Pretty good start for him. Feliz now two years removed from Tommy John surgery. Brewer signed him in January. 62 appearances last year, a couple of saves. Felt like he was ready to step back into that closer's role, and the Brewers gave him that chance. He had plenty of options around Major League Baseball, but wanted to close. Yeah, good fastball. 99 miles an hour right by Blackman. And the count. Yeah. At one and two. I'll say the uh, fastball's back. Sitting on 99 career saves, Neftali Feliz. And once again, the Rockies down to their last strike. Tying run is on deck. Feliz trying to keep it that way. One and two to Blackman. Here it comes. And he misses. Did he go? He did not. Checks a swing. Two and two. Yep, just a little bit off the outside corner. Good eye by Charlie Blackman. We've seen that a couple of times with him tonight. Two two. Feliz deals and a strikeout to end it. A little twist at the top. A little Louis Tion for Johnny Cueto. And he gets Blackman to win the game and the Brewers win it. 6 1 the final. Willie Peralta picks up the win. Neftali Feliz with his first save as a Brewer and career save number 100.
home runs tonight from Thames and Shaw and Jonathan VR and a little that's twist what, at the end. That's what messed up Charlie Blackman. He swung and missed and kind of looked back at him saying, what was that? <laughs> I like it. Just disrupting the timing. Good ball game here at Millet Park. First win of the year for the Brewers. And they'll wrap up the series tomorrow afternoon. It's time for Brewers Live. Let's check in with Craig Kishon standing by in the right field corner. Craig. All right, good stuff there. Great ending there in the last moment by Feliz. The Brewers get their first big league.